There you go. There's our podcast, Flaming Walnut. Cool. You well, got it? Yeah, it's recording. So, hello. Uh, this is Flaming Walnut. Yeah, this is Flaming Walnut. Justin Velez and Josh Delgado sitting by a fire. Just going to talk about stuff. Talk about things that are, you know, pertinent. Because for me personally, like, Josh, we've been friends for, like, more than 10 years now, if you think about it. See, I was... I met you the end of my ninth grade year. Mm-hmm. So I was... 14? Yep, and I was 15 because I'm a, a year older than you. So we are so we're, 12 years? 12 years now. It'll be 12 to 13 years that we've been friends and best friends for that much, even though, oh, dude. Pink, <laughs> pinky touch. Pinky touch. Um, despite us, you know, not being in each other's lives for, you know, maybe the past five or six years or so. Kind of, I yeah. feel like we've always still had, like, a really close bond, and when we get together, it's like, you know, Time's never really passed by, just mm-hmm. different things we talk about. Just kind of pick back up where we left off. I think it's I think it's poignant also that we're here at your child, like, your <laughs> high school home. Of, yeah. You know, I was telling uh, Patrick of all the times we, you know, you would walk to my house and I'd walk to your house and we'd go under the bridge and we'd just walk around the cul-de-sac and just talk about things that were so important to us that seemed so trivial and weird now. But mm-hmm. now it's... and. What's funny is we're still kind of talking about that kind of stuff, like love lives and future and relationships. And it's just, even though we've gotten older, it's the same conversation. But yeah, it's, just slightly more mature. Yeah, and I always feel like, because I don't get this from anyone else, I feel like mentally and um, intellectually stimulated. Because I wouldn't consider myself a very, not that I, I think I'm dumb, but I'm not a very smart in the respect of like, you know, I'm not real book smart, but when I talk to you, you know, I, I have, I've always had issues discussing my feelings and whatnot Mm -hmm. and my thought processes. And, but for some reason, when it's come to you, if I've always, it's always been easy for me and I don't know why, I don't know if that just speaks for our relationship or something in that regard. I think cause we both are that way where Mm -hmm. it's kind of hard. I I know my brain to mouth connection sometimes is a little off. And uh, it's been the same. Like it's, it's a little hard for me to articulate things sometimes, but I yeah. just it's been easier with you. And I, I don't. I definitely don't think you're dumb. I think your <laughs> your intelligence is is in the uh, creative side. It's so like that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. You're just hyper on with. You know. Yeah. If I can make a career out of it, you that can. Would be, yeah. Is that right? I How believe so? in you. Oh boy. So I wanted to talk to something today. I saw something interesting on social media um, where it was someone who wrote a meme. It was going said, around. Hold on. <laughs> when you said social media, do you remember that episode of It's Always Sunny where, <laughs> where Dee and, and um, Dennis start a, a radio show or a yeah. podcast? Yeah, and they keep making uh, Cricket eat lemons. Yeah, but the way they started off, he's like, me- social media. Oh, my God, social media. Social media. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, sorry for that detail. No, you're fine. Uh, no, I was on the social media, and I uh, I came across this little blurb that someone wrote, and I thought it'd be really interesting, because uh, I asked a co-worker who considers themselves a gamer. I would consider you and your brother huge gamers. Um, the, even more so, like, classic and... I feel like video games have really shaped and influenced us in different ways. I don't consider myself like a heavy gamer, mm-hmm. but there are certain games that, you know, are poignant for me. So the the meme or the question or whatever it was, was if you, someone you never met, uh, but you wanted them to get to know you and you had the opportunity to sit them down and have them play five video games... Across the board, what five video games would they be? And I think we should start in like five to your top. Like this is this is if you want to understand me, this is the game. Yeah. So I I want to pitch it over to you first. Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah, to figure okay. out what what what's your like fifth game? Like what is something that you know something that shaped you? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, first, I don't think I'm a huge gamer. Mm-hmm. I I like them a lot, but. Seeing how other people are gamers, I'm like, nah, dude, I like, I'm gonna go outside. I wouldn't say like gamer in the sense of like, 
Yeah, I play for an esports team. Yeah. Uh, and it's pronounced gamer. Gamer? Uh, I'm, I think of gamer in the more classic sense of, like, it's summer vacation. And, you know, you just woke up. It's like 8 a.m. You got your N64. You just spent the previous night playing a shit ton of one particular game. You wake up and you're putting in that cartridge. Like, what game are you playing? What's right, something that right. you go straight for? Like, gamer, like... You're nine years old, not a care in the fucking world. You're going to play with your friends later. Miss those days. Right? Okay, well, my, my number five, I uh, I put Miss Pac-Man. Ooh. <laughs> a good example of why is, remember, it was like three months ago, yeah. we went to go get pizza and wings, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a Miss Pac-Man arcade, and we could have been there for five minutes, but instead we were there for like fifteen. Yeah, because you're not I'm playing. Very good. You are very good. I'm good at Miss Pac Man, and uh, that was a game that I I had a port for it on the Game Boy SP, the okay. Advance SP. Yeah. So when I couldn't sleep, I would just play that, and it's it's very simple. You can see everything, and it just gets faster and faster. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of predicting where things are going to go, mm-hmm. and then moving yourself into the best possible position right 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 and it's, it's super simple but it's fun oh i might have to change one of these actually yeah you think so i just i came up with one just it, it'll be one. an honorable mention okay so uh, um but yeah so miss pac-man is, yeah, is one Pac-Man's of mine dope. um I, it's funny you say that because mine is also a a port um my first one is street fighter 2 turbo Ooh. when i was a kid um I didn't have a Game Boy Advance SP, but I had the original Game Boy Advance. Uh, I had a little worm light. And <laughs> I remember those. I, because my mom wouldn't let me sleep with my door closed as a kid, so I would play my Game Boy with my sheets over their, my covers uh, over my head, and I would play Street Fighter II Turbo until all hours of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, that, was, that was my game to... You know, it was to unwind. I my goal was to beat the game with every single character, and I think that was the first time I've ever done that. Like I made a conscious decision. Yeah, yeah. Usually when I played fighting games, and it started my real love because I love arcade fighting games. That's like my go-to, even though it's the only arcade fighting game on my list. But um, it was my first definitive game where I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna beat it with every single character. I want to see every single ending." I want to get good with every character. Maybe I'm good with this character. I got to figure it out. And I I still have that game to this day, and I haven't picked it up in a while, but uh, when you got me the fight stick, uh, mm-hmm. I, of course, played the original like game on Nintendo. And uh, it just... I love that fighting game so much. Have ever you ever... Do you know the YouTube channel or YouTuber, uh, The Completionist? I've, I've heard of them. Because they, uh, they just play completely through games and talk about how long it took them and everything. Oh, yeah. And that's what that made me think of. Okay. It's entertaining. The, each video is like 20 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. So if you're just looking for background noise or you just you don't want to you don't want to think. Yeah, it's just, yeah. oh, cool, tell me about a game. It's cool. He did like Spyro recently. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Yeah, Street Fighter is good. I'm so bad. You're Street so Fighter. Bad. Oh, man, a game that I might actually be able to beat you in? Oh, 100% you could beat uh. me. So that, yeah, I'm not good at it. I don't believe you. I really don't. We can we can bust out uh, Super Smash Ultimate and that, only uh, play as Ryu and Ken. Oh, is that right? Because uh, you have you can do the combos. Ken's my boy. I'll hit you with the uh, the Tatsumaki. I have no idea what that the is. show Ryu Ken. Oh, I know that one. Tatsumaki is when he does the they do the propeller kick. Oh, okay. And they go, poof, poof. they go Tatsumaki. Poof, poof, poof. Mm. I use that all the time in Smash. <laughs> How about we play? We plug in the fight stick because I brought it and I brought both controllers. We'll play Street Fighter 2. Okay, I'm down. Cool. So that's your five? That's my fifth. Okay. My number four. Mm-hmm. So this is where I have that caveat. Okay. I put God of War 4, Ooh. but kind of the whole series. Okay. So God of War 4, I, I love the God of War series because mm-hmm. I really like, um, like Greek, Norse, Roman mythology mm-hmm. um, but God of War 4 is the one that is is the most story driven like the most that's aesthetically your definitive. yeah and it's newer but it's it's oh it's so good mm-hmm. um, but what I like about the series is that it it grew up as I did okay so you have have you played all of I them? haven't 
Oh, you haven't played any of them? But I know of it. I just, I never played it. It kind of did like a Harry Potter thing, right? Like it was a really crude Xbox or PlayStation game. Mm-hmm. And then as it grew, now it's the one with him, like the beard and everything's like super, excuse me, uh, super realistic and hyper like. Y- yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, it's hyper realistic in the way it looks. Yeah. But yeah, the first one, it's just like a platformer. You play this guy who just straight wants revenge and lots of blood and mm-hmm. you can fuck women in the yeah. first to get a first like room to get experience um but it's just a very gory but fun button masher game sure and then it gets a little bit more story driven in the second and a little more story driven you learn more about his past mm-hmm. and then you get to the fourth and it becomes this whole deep story about a a tortured man trying to guide his son into adulthood without to Without having him repeat the mistakes that he did, because okay. he's got the anger, he's got all the all those flaws. Yeah, that like stuff, that'll definitely pick up. But, oh, definitely. Um, but yeah, it's it's it becomes this this deep story, and it's so pretty, mm. and it just it's it's very fun to play. It's one of the few games that I kind of like Street Fighter Two yeah. for you that I went through and like I want to I want to do everything. Yeah, you want to figure everything out. But it's uh it's a lot of fun. Mm. So God of War Four, but the entire series as a whole. Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, my second game, or my fourth game, is, uh, I went Pokemon Blue. Okay. Uh, it was my first foray into, as you know now, how important RPGs are to me. Um, it was my first foray into not only a Japanese RPG, but RPGs in general. It was something that I can totally assume, uh, the character was so... Uh, generic looking that I pictured myself as this kid. Mm-hmm. I could wear a ball cap. Yeah, I can go on right my own. Now. Ad- yeah, right. Uh, I can go on my own adventures, and I remember just playing it for hours. I just I didn't know how everything worked. Like some people, like my roommate and other people, uh, like I would say you and Pat and Mike, when you really got on the Pokemon train, like you went hardcore, and you're like, well, this one beats this one, and I fell off around Sapphire. Mm-hmm. And I just, I was never able to pick it back up because life, despite having Pokemon Black and Crystal and all these other ones, I just never picked it up after Sapphire. But Pokemon Blue was such an important game to me. It was the first thing that me and my childhood best friend really bonded over as far as the game went. My mom, because I was the only child, she didn't know the difference and I didn't know the difference. She got me both Blue and Red for oh. Christmas one year and I didn't realize it was the same game until I started playing either or and I gave my best friend Red I'm like now we can trade and oh it was that's just cool like, yeah it was just like our first thing that we could do together and it just that game meant like a lot to me and I didn't realize like oh the character on the back is Blastoise I should probably try you know pick Squirtle as the as my starter because I don't know like is that how I'm supposed to do it like mm-hmm never thought of it and then i remember bringing game boys to elementary school and playing it before class and just game boy color came out and playing that on there it was just it was it meant like the world to me yeah so did you were know? you uh you were a squirtle person i was a squirtle guy even though um i i've been always really weird with favorite characters in anything when i was a kid mm-hmm. now i just i'm already off the wall but when I was a kid, I was very much, like, with everyone else. So it was, oh, man, I love Squirtle. And then my cousin, I remember, she's like, oh, my God, I love Squirtle. I'm like, actually, I like Charmander. <laughs> because I didn't want to copy anyone. I wanted yeah. to, I wanted my own identity. Now, me personally, I'm like, I really do like Charmander. I like uh, Mighty Enya and Poochyena. Those yeah. are my favorite Pokemon. Those are cool. Yeah, but... Uh, I started playing Let's Go Eevee again because mm-hmm. uh, my roommate has it, and it's basically just Pokemon Blue or Red. And just I've like been, streamlined. Mm-hmm, I've been having such a fucking treat with it. It's so great. Oh, that's one I, I'd like to. I couldn't bring myself to spend the, the sixty bucks on it. Yeah. Because I, I like those games a lot, but mm-hmm. I can't sit down and play it. Yeah. It's just it it doesn't fit, sit with me anymore. Yeah, yeah. But I I played uh, Red. I had Red and Yellow. Yeah. And blue and yellow. It just, yeah, those games were so crazy. And it did, I just, I loved them. Yeah. So my number yeah. three, What's right? number three? Yep. Number three, old school RuneScape. <laughs> what? Yeah. I, uh, Please elaborate. If you had asked me like two months ago, I wouldn't have said it. But playing it again, because the mobile client came out. Yeah. Um, 
I remember why it's fun, and it's very much because I like to achieve things. I'm very goal oriented, so <laughs> yeah. So it has it has like the incremental like dopamine burst of oh you got up a level you got up a level yeah instant gratification yeah well not even instant it's it's progressive so it, the, the goals start off really really easy but then they slowly get further and further apart but the whole time i have this goal that's way down there yeah and um it's it's an economic simulator i've been saying that since i started playing yeah and uh, basically i like that i like money and and figuring out how to work with it okay it's like math too yeah so it's it's the not the least gamey game but it's a very it's a numbers crunchy game yeah and, and it's kind of fun. grindy and it's uh it's about efficiency yeah so like if i'm at work and i like the server isn't working mm -hmm. or there's there's certain tasks you can do that take three minutes where i'm just like not touching my phone so it's press a button wait three minutes do some actual work three minutes later spend five seconds pressing a button again yeah and by the end of the day i've done like a lot of stuff without <laughs> having to really think about it right so that that like efficiency and, and kind of mm -hmm. kind of thing is really cool and and it's like a it's an mmo mm -hmm. so you get the community aspect oh of course so i have i have two friends three so i have three friends who play it heavily my brother is playing it again heavily yeah um trying to get you into it yeah uh, Shane said he's trying to stream. And Jackson was playing it while we were <laughs> yeah. playing D&D. &D. Yeah. Jackson's Which was good because that was a way for me to talk to him right off the bat. Yeah, connect with him. Uh, I remember playing RuneScape when I was a kid. Like uh, my neighborhood friend Soren, uh -huh. he was my uh, computer game kind of Sherpa. I'm like, you can play games on the computer that's not solitaire and pinball. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to play StarCraft uh, oh, when dude, the Matrix so game first came out. He got that, like he, and he used to play RuneScape all the time, and I used to try to play with him. And uh, yeah, I would love to try to get back into it because it's like you know, it's like Dungeons and Dragons without you know Dungeons and Dragons. Well, yeah, technically, I mean, and there's I'm dragons sure and dungeons. I sure. I really think running a D and D campaign based on the quests, yeah, would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's very niche, but mm -hmm. I think it'd be entertaining. Well, if you ever want a DM. That's what I was thinking because there's game. a guide already. Like it's it's a rail, so I can I can kind of. That's awesome. That'd be about it. <laughs> fish, fish, <laughs> Just, fish. Your shrimp. Level, your level shrimp. seventeen. Fish for seven seven more hours. All right. <laughs> Roll your d twenty. Roll your d twenty. Oh, you fish. leveled up. Neat. <laughs> no, but there are quests, dude. The game is actually a shitload better. Yeah. Because I'm I'm finally to the point where I'm playing content that came out right as I quit. Mm. So there's there's so much shit now. Yeah. There's like raid bosses Ooh. and uh, a bunch of mini games. It's cool. That is cool. So start playing. I'll jump on my alt. You got it. So I'm gonna make it a pure. Oh god, I don't know what that means. It means like you only <laughs> go into certain ste certain skills, yeah. so that your level is really <laughs> low and you can PK people. Oh, which means god. player kill. Yeah, you explained that to me last night. I'm like PK. All right. PK fire. PK yeah. fire. Okay, your number three. My number three is uh, Bioshock. Oh, good the one. First Bioshock game. Um, I remember my first experience with Bioshock was we were at Mike's house. Mm -hmm. And it was either you or him that started playing it. It was the four of us, the original four, uh, Pickle Cat Boys. Mm -hmm. And I remember just watching either you, I think it was you playing, and it was the scene where the surgeon was making the working on the bodies and he was just like pounding on it and it was just shot in this like i never saw a game at that point that was shot so cinematically mm -hmm. and i was like i need to get this for myself so when i was living by with my uh then girlfriend in tarpon i got the first bioshock pretty cheap at marshall's when i oh, worked yeah. there uh and i played through the game and it was just it it was mind blowing, like the story and the twists and the term and that twist ending that, you know, everything that just kind of happens on this nameless, faceless antagonist. It was just like the Pokemon thing where I got emotionally attached. I love silent protagonists mm -hmm. because you can project everything onto it. Yeah. And you have your own experiences. That's what uh, I saw a really interesting interview with uh, Trey Parker. Uh, who does uh, from South Park? Yeah. When he was talking about Stick of Truth, they were like, "Well, you know, there's a lot of things like Mass Effect where you pick your options." And he's like, "I hated that as a kid. 
or I hate that now because as a kid, you can project your own feelings and desires and wants into this, you know, game that you're playing. And what is it? Bioshock 100% did that to me where I was, I was invested into what happened to the story. Mm -hmm. And I just thought the mechanics were out of this world. And it was, um, there's this really interesting video on how they, you know, why video game movies suck. And they use Bioshock as a, um, as an example. And it was basically that Bioshock is, Bioshock is just a mystery story that they added powers in to just spice it up because they needed to make it a video game. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think it makes it so great. It's at its core. It's just a fantastic story. Yeah. So it's like that with you with God of War, I think, in that regard where it's like, this is a great like build up to. Did you play the other Bi the other Bioshocks? I started playing the second one. Uh, I, have, I hadn't been able to finish it. And then I know of Infinite, and I know how amazing Infinite is, but I never got to play it. I'm mm -hmm. sure now that it's probably on sale, I can probably get it for pretty cheap. Yeah. It's it's kind of the same issue like you're having with Pokemon. I don't know if I can sit down and play it mm -hmm. at this point in my life because I just... I, I'd rather sit and not do anything sometimes. <laughs> you spend so much brain power. Yeah. at work that now you just want to like turn off for a little bit exactly and that happens a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm going to volley it back over to you what is your two okay number two I also as we're going through the list mm -hmm. I keep thinking of ones that might fit better okay. so at the end I'm going to do all my honorable mentions okay. and just I'll say they might uh, might mix up a little bit okay okay but my two is Rock Band oh okay <clears throat> I didn't even think of Rock Band yeah I, I thought of it while we were talking and I switched it out um, for I'm, I'm writing it down now. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, because we played it so goddamn much we did. in high school. We really like that did. was what we did on the weekends. Um, the pickle cat group, mm -hmm. and I, I like music a lot, and I always wanted to learn drums, mm -hmm. but I never could. Like there's, we're at the house now. There's no space for a, for a drum set. Yeah. And my 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 mom definitely wouldn't have wanted that much noise no definitely um, not. but rock band was a good middle ground where I, like i kind of learned tempo mm -hmm. and, and keeping a beat yeah but without having to get a whole kit or get uh, lessons oh sure i could spend 200 bucks on a game and then have the drum set and that's yeah that i mean we, we probably spent we got a couple more. hundred hours yeah we so. def definitely got more than your 200 bucks worth of it yeah so that was, uh, and it was a, another community thing, because that was something that the four of us did. We yeah. had our, our band Mediocrity. <laughs> and, Mercy uh, Flush. Mercy Flush, yeah. We, it was cool. I, what was also, I think, cool about Rock Band and Guitar Hero was that we all kind of fit in those molds. Like, there was no question about, like, oh, Josh does guitar. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, Nikki sings. Or, oh, Justin plays bass or Mike plays drums like we like there would obviously be different different like lineups obviously you wanted to play drums or I would want to play guitar or something like that but when we were like in it we had our assigned and we just we did usually really well yeah and because how you guys always played and pushed yourselves uh, I was my hand eye coordination isn't as good as I I wanted it to ever be mm -hmm. but because you guys would be like yeah I do it hard I do expert I'm like shit I gotta pick up my game you guys had to save me a lot at the beginning but by the time we were really hitting our stride mm -hmm. I was like keeping up pretty well like you guys were on expert but I was doing hard for bass and people were like yeah bass is this I'm like that's where I got all my finger strength from I should probably start playing that again so I can play my bass good here. yeah because <laughs> oh god I played my bass guitar like <sighs> A few, maybe a month or so ago, mm -hmm. and it was rough. I'm like, fuck, I used to play this all the time, and yeah. the songs I couldn't play, I can't keep tempo anymore with. I tried I tried playing guitar. I started playing guitar again, uh, just yeah. picking it up. And um, I have, like, two songs that I can do that have just stuck with me throughout the years. Mm -hmm. But trying to do a new song is so fucking hard now. <laughs> yeah. Because I spend, I spend all day staring at a computer and not talking. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I've noticed that my voice is kind of, like, receded back here. Okay. Where I, I, I'm, I'm closing my throat a lot instead of, you know, because we, we always, we were talking all the time. We were in theater. Yeah, yeah. So we got really good at projecting, and uh, I'm just so out of practice. No, I got that. It's so hard. I get that. But it's it's something worth doing, too, because there's, um, there's 
one of the activities that promotes the left and the right hemisphere communicating of your brain mm-hmm. is playing music. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, uh, I remember one of the, one of the times I was having some brain fog, like six months ago, I read that like, all right, I can't think, so I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was like fumbling along. My fingers were just sausages. But after 15, 20 minutes, I was kind of getting into a groove and like, oh, all right. Yeah. This is, this is what's, oh yeah, I'm I'm a person. Okay. Yeah. And the the fog kind of started to clear and I could Mm -hmm. think again. So... You want to start a band? <laughs> Fucking do it, bro. Let's do it, dude. I'll get it home. Space, space, space. Sandwich, sandwich, sandwich. Sandwich, sandwich. <laughs> uh, so what's... That was my number two, right? Yeah, that was yeah. your number two. So back to yours. My number two is uh, Super Mario World. Mm. Is the uh, the first one with Yoshi. Like uh, Street Fighter, I alternated between those two games. Uh, but Super Mario, I think I put the most man hours into mm-hmm. when I was a kid. Um One of my honorable mentions was originally in my number two slot, and I just thought of it, and I'm like, you know what? Super Mario World beats it. Um, It was just... It it was another port for Game Boy Advance, so they they fixed Luigi in that they made him jump higher, and they gave him the the lag, the air time, Mm -hmm. but... Those were all fantastic. I went through all the different kind of like star rainbow roads to go through. I remember trying to take on Bowser and getting my ass kicked because I wasn't ready for it. It was, I remember uh, when I was a kid, I was a Sega Genesis kid. Me too. Uh, First and foremost, I was always a Sega Genesis kid. I didn't know that there was a Nintendo anything until I moved to... No, I didn't know. I didn't know until I visit one of my cousins in Harlem, Joshua, and he was playing uh, SNES and he was playing Super Mario World. And I'm like, what is this? This this is awesome. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, this is explaining everything. I loved the color palette, like on the original SNES when I Mm -hmm. watched it the first time. It was so appeasing to the eye where Sega's so 90s, like everything's like jet, like the... I think the way past cool, way too cool. He's not cheap. He's just fat. (laughs) Um, I think the 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 best way I can describe like Sega's palette and what I think immediately when I think of Sega isn't um, Sonic as you would think. Mm -hmm. It was it was a game called Comics World or Comic Zone. Yeah, yeah. That's how I imagine it. It's that weird like the palettes, like the colors are toned down and it's not vibrant and. Like this, seeing Super Mario for the first, like Super Mario World for the first time, it just, it looked so much brighter and it looked like, it looked amazing. It didn't yeah. look like edgy. So when I was a kid, I played the fuck out of Super Mario World or Super Mario Advance too. <laughs> uh, and I, that's another game I still have that I, every once in a while, I'll play it on the, the fight stick. I'll put it on and, uh, yeah, I, it's a I, great game. I found my, uh, my SP mm-hmm. in my closet. Yeah. Still held to charge. Yeah? Yeah. I think the last time I turned it on was probably two years ago. Like, when I moved into that place. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, those lithium batteries, man. Yeah. They last forever. Funny enough about SP, uh, at Marshall's, uh, right before I left, uh, I think Rebecca found uh, a Game Boy Advance SP and uh, in the store. Yeah. And no one claimed it. And she's like, I was going to throw this out, but do you want this? And I went, Yeah. And I, and I still have it. I bought a charger off of Amazon. and I remember that. I do remember that. Yeah. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> it's, it's in my night drawer. I have a video game drawer uh-huh. by my nightstand where I keep my all my stuff in. Oh, my that's Game Boy, my in DS. There? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. All right. You're number one. Before I go to number one. Honorable mention? No. Well, I'll do that too. First, I got to jump back to RuneScape because that reminded me of a story. Okay. Another reason why it's so... Uh, important to who I am. Mm-hmm. The first time I ever outsourced work was on RuneScape. So I used to have Donovan do the grindy tasks for me, and mm-hmm. I would give him Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Oh my god! So I was outsourcing work at like eleven. That's like I don't want to do this here. Do it for me. Polymerization. Let me throw money at the problem. Um, I also the first time <laughs> I, I traded uh, in-game gold for Game Boy Advance SPs. Oh yeah. And then I sold those for real money. So at one point I had four or five Game Boy Advance SPs mm-hmm. because I, different skater friends I had were like, oh yeah, uh, can I have 30k gold? Mm. I'll give you this SP. Fuck yeah. yeah. This is a real thing. I understand that this is fake. Yeah. So uh, my <laughs> businessmen 
businessman mentality or entrepreneur yeah, started when I was super young. Um, so honorable mentions. Yes. And one more, one more swap. I'm going to switch out God of War for Zelda. Really? Yeah, because Zelda, I played, I love those games. Yeah. Kind of the ha- same kind of series idea. Of course. But it's, it's the silent protagonist and it's um, puzzles. And I, yeah. I like puzzles. Yeah, yeah. But it's still a, a grandiose adventure. Um, so some quick, quick ones. Okay. Rocket League, because okay. I play that a lot now. Sure. Final Fantasy VII was the first JRPG okay. that I ever got into, and it was my friend's mom who was playing. Oh, really? And me and his name was Brandon. We would just like watch. We would just hang out, and like really? she would play really? through it. And, That's awesome. Uh, Portal Two, okay. which I can kind of take away now, but that because puzzles. Yeah. Uh, Kingdom Hearts. Eli and I used to play that a lot. I still have your Kingdom Hearts in your PlayStation. Do you? <laughs> yep, it's in the video game drawer. Oh, good. Yeah. Play it, man. I do. I haven't played them in a while, but... Sonic 2. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Classic. And uh, Pokemon Yellow. Pokemon Yellow. Because once you said blue, that reminded me. Um, yeah. The first first time I ever saved up a bunch of money and bought something mm-hmm. was my like aqua-colored Pokemon... Uh, Game Boy? Game Boy Color with Pokemon Yellow. Yeah. And um, I remember it was like... <laughs> I remember sitting... It was, I was still in Oklahoma... And we were sitting in the living room, and I kept counting my money over and over and over, hoping that more would show up. Oh. <laughs> but my, uh, my grandpa would walk by every once in a while and just, like, throw an extra dollar in. That's adorable. So it slowly did grow. Yeah, yeah. And I would, like, I had all my change, and I'm like, oh, here's another dollar. Okay, I'm almost $70. It's $70? Okay. So those, those are the honorable mentions. Yeah, and that's something, like, that's so, that shit's, like, so important to you as a kid, like, saving up all that money for that. And, mm-hmm. man, it's... Fucking to be a kid again. Yeah. Uh, so with that, what is your number one then? Super Smash Brothers. Okay. Just as a whole, or I, I put Melee because that was the one I I played a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole series, but Melee because 2001, I was supposed to. I so my cousin was going to get a GameCube. I was going to get a PS2. Okay. And then we could like play each other's games or oh, whatever. Sure, sure. What it ended up happening was I got a GameCube. He got a PS2. Okay. It just kind of flipped. Yeah. Luckily. But the game I got was Super Smash Brothers, and I was at um, my grandparents up in Pennsylvania. Mm. I just played it, played it a shitload. Yeah, uh, Eli would try to play it, and you want to play it? Like, no. But <laughs> yeah, and I got I got pretty good, not like professional level good, but I got really good. Sure. And um, it was, I don't think I re- I definitely didn't realize it then, but it was a form of active meditation mm. for me because I could kind of zone out for like uh, the AI characters Mm -hmm. and just focus on one thing kind of block stuff out as a way to kind of clear my head yeah yeah and uh, when I used to talk on the phone with people I would do that yeah because it was it was away from it because I couldn't walk around Mm -hmm. (laughs) because my parents wouldn't let me walk around so I could do that and it was a way for me to kind of focus on the conversation Mm -hmm. and it's just it's something that I've played for since 17 almost 18 years now yeah Still have the the same controllers. Right, right. Then, yeah, they still work great. No stick. They're almost they fuckable. Sticky. They're almost fuckable. Almost eighteen years old. Ugh. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are your uh, your honorables? And- honorable mentions. Um, my honorable mentions. It was a uh, N sixty four game I used to play all the co- time called uh, WCW NWO Revenge. <laughs> okay. It was a wrestling game. I played the fuck out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, Castlevania two. Good one. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 3. It was between Super Mario Brothers 3 and Super Mario World. But I realized I played Super Mario World in 3. Um, uh, Friday the 13th, the NES game. Oh, I never played that one. I have it on the stick. We'll play. Oh, That's shit. one of my go-tos. Uh, I haven't beaten it. You can't beat it. No one beats Jason. Okay. Um, but my number one, as, as corny as it may be and how obsessed I am with it right now, has been it's been Earthbound. I yeah. think number one is Earthbound for me. And that's an you just started playing that? Or I did started, you play it as a kid? I never played it as a kid because um, I never had an SNES. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's one of those white whales. Like my first uh, exposure to NES was, uh, I think like everyone else in America was, at least my age, was through Smash. Because... Mm-hmm. Uh, 1991 and I think uh, Earthbound came out in 92 and it did it was not well received so by the time I was like you know conscious in the world 
I, not only was I a Sega kid, but people were already moving on to, you know, your Super Mario Worlds, your Kirby's Dream Lands and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, I didn't get to play it until much later in life until you actually gave me the fight stick itself. Huh. I saw that it was on it and I'm like, I've always heard really good things about it. Let me just take a shot. First time I played it, I instantly fell in love. It was that feeling of when I saw Super Mario World for the first time. It was those bright colors. It was the way it looked. The aesthetic was really nice. Um, and then I kind of just fell off of it because life happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I re-picked it up recently just after gushing about it. Like Even though I played it for maybe like three weeks on and off, um, I played it again at Isaiah's when he got the Super Nintendo Mini and I got even farther than I did before. And I'm like, this game's great. Why don't I play it when I get home? Played it a little bit and then life happened. Mm -hmm. Now with this time, I've literally gone the farthest I've ever gone in the game so far and I'm almost halfway through it. And it's just, it's a beautiful game. It's a great story. It's funny. Like I was telling you when you start, like when you came over, I was like, this is actually like funny game. It's amusing. And the story is really interesting and existential and it asks all these different questions. And there's so many theories about it. Like the, the legacy of this dumb, stupid game that mm-hmm. someone, you know, put so much into is just fascinating to me. And so I think that it's, I mean, I know it's on everyone like gamers list of like games to play before you die, but I really think it's one of those games you need to experience. And, um, I think my next goal is I need to get a flash drive. I really want to start. I want to play mother three, which was an exclusive Japanese game boy advance game. Mm-hmm. Cause earthbound is mother two. Yes. Right. Uh, and then they, what is it? When the virtual boy came out on Wii U, they released earthbound and they released, uh, mother one which is uh they call it earthbound beginnings uh and it was it's basically earthbound uh on nes so Mm -hmm. basically they improved everything in uh in earthbound but that's i want to try to play all the games like the culture is really interesting i think the like just the legacy behind it is super interesting and there's so much culture with it oh and um i i forgot for my honorable mention i just remembered it's uh because you said Zelda. It's uh, Zelda Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. Yeah, dude, I loved that one. I still have my copies of it. I do too. So good. We should play. Yeah. If you want to play Seasons, I'll play uh, Ages. And then we swap and then off. We do the passwords thing. Wait, what's what's the passwords thing? The passwords thing? You don't know that? You can continue your game when you complete one because you get a password at the end of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you just continue to the next one. Fire. Woo. I'm uh, putting more wood on the fire. Put the bag in. This is authentic. Yeah. Those wood crackling sounds are real. Yeah. Because that's hope, real. I hope it doesn't fuck the audio. Don't you like it? <laughs> Don't you want it? Yeah. That, that's that's one of the games that um, made me say Zelda too. Yeah. Because it was on the Game Boy so I could play it at night under the sheet exactly. when I couldn't sleep. With the worm light. Mm-hmm. I, I had I had one that was also a magnifying glass. Yes, yes, <laughs> you yes. Had that too? Yes. It was awful. God. Game Boy had so many fucking weird Mad Cat like accessories that went with it. Like there's the amplifier. You can plug it in so you can really hear your speakers. Yeah. My mom always made me turn it fucking down. Yeah. She's like, I don't want to hear that. I'm like, but I want to hear the music. She's like, no. No. Most of the games I played without audio because it was at night. Yeah. I yeah. I did that too. I re- uh, and always fogging up my screen because I had to be under the covers. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think basically the best. I think the Game Boy is such a great gaming console. I could gush about the Game Boy for at least a good thirty minutes mm-hmm. of just gushing about it. But uh, I'll end with this: there was nothing like coming home or going on a really long car ride during the day and then coming back home. And waiting for each street light to come by so you can progress a little bit farther in your game. Yeah. A little bit farther because you didn't have the light yet. Because you didn't, like, I remember when I first got it, I'm like, what do you mean I need a light? Because I never thought past that. Mm-hmm. And, of course, my mom wouldn't think past that because she's like, I don't know what this is. And backlights weren't a thing yet. No. At least not at that. My first level. Game Boy, and I looked for it. I I'm, I really want to buy one on Amazon because I get really nostalgic. I, it's It was a red Game Boy Pocket. Like the one that had the one sharp corner and one rounded? Uh, I think so. It was it was smaller than the original Game Boy, but it was black and white as opposed to like the green. The Game Boy Color? It wasn't the Game Boy. It was right before the Game Boy Color. It's a Game Boy Pocket. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the, the bottom left corner is, is pointed yeah. and then it's rounded on the one yeah, side. Yeah. yeah. I really want one of those again. So 
maybe. Maybe someday. You'll get it. I believe in you. Yeah. Elbow touch. Oh, thanks, dude. I will I'll wrap up with yeah. um, the story of how I got how my brother started playing video games. Yeah. Oh god. Have tell I me ever that. told you that? No. Oh wait, you might have. So it, we we were on a road trip mm. and Eli was probably three, maybe four. Let's see, it was before my parents split, so mm. Yeah, let, let's say he was. He, let's say he was three. Okay. And I think we were driving back from Pennsylvania. Okay. And we stopped at a Wendy's to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I was playing uh, Mario. It was like the very first Game Boy Mario. Okay, which so it was you Mario Land. Maybe you couldn't save. Right. That's it was like, Mario Land. Okay, so it was Mario Land. Do do Yeah. Yep. That's it. So I was playing that, and I I got. I don't know. I had to go into the bathroom and Eli wasn't going to go. So I said, here, Eli, you can play until I get back. And I went to the bathroom, came back, like, okay, Eli, my turn to play. Mm-hmm. Nope. No. He wouldn't give it back to me. And he never did. Never did. Uh, my parents bought me a new one because he would not let me have it. Wow. So <laughs> that's how I, that's how he started playing games. And I, thanks, Wendy's. Thanks. Thanks, Wendy's. Uh, I think that's super interesting because uh, I feel like video gaming is such a big part of your brother's life, mm-hmm. uh, and it's always been like that's something that I've always been able to talk to him about. Yeah, because you're uh, not to get too like into it, but your your brother was the first like autistic person I've ever met, mm-hmm. and uh, I never knew about that. Like I was, I don't want to say I was sheltered, but I never ran into that experience, and. Um, Usually I had you around to kind of buffer that and I'd be able to gauge like how to talk to him And I think what really worked for that was I was at uh, we went to Christo's me and my mom and your mom and Eli happened to be there And I just struck up immediately conversation I'm like hey Eli did you see that new Sonic that game that's coming out and we just started talking about it Yeah, and your mom was like well, you know, they'll always have something to talk about I guess yeah It was yeah. just it was really it was really cool and it's such a big aspect of his of his personality mm-hmm and you know he's he knows every single game i think he's played like inside and out oh yeah yeah if, if he was uh like video minded he could he could do like completionist type stuff oh definitely for sure. definitely i mean you're staying in his room now you see the the game setup he has mm-hmm. it's a sick setup he's got such a sweet setup he does he's got that big tv mm-hmm. his pc's hooked up to it and then you just switched hdmi to yeah switch switch so cool well i think that was a good good introductory episode Blind and walnut next time that, that went a lot longer than i was expecting to yeah i was picturing like a 15 20 minute yeah, thing you're like what are we going to talk about i'm like oh, i don't know we'll figure it out yeah plus we get the the listicle mm. thing and that is great uh clickbait clickbait titles what top five anything that's like video games. five things that this five things that x and y yeah, people love that. That's why um, you, you know, cracked the the. It used to be a website, and yeah. podcast, and all that stuff. It used to be a magazine, then it became a website. Yeah, they they stopped doing a lot of their stuff. Kind yeah. of helped me out. They had really good videos, but that was one of the things that they talked about was why they do that is because it's it's attention getting. So as yeah. long as you don't abuse it, it's fine. Yeah, neat. Flaming walnut, man. Woo! This is good. We'll probably like, talk I, for like five more hours after this, but yeah. Too. It's funny how, how this whole thing is just like, uh, yeah, this walnut's on fire, so flaming walnut. <laughs> but, yeah, what time? Yeah, we'll be up for a little bit. You gotta work on that campaign. I mean, I'll, I can work on it in the morning, too. Yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not too concerned. Well, I, I say let's do it for like half an You work on it for half an hour, because I need to finish that quest in number three, RuneScape. Old School RuneScape. It'll take me like 15 minutes. Oh, okay. So, okay. Well, see ya. Bye, guys.